DC today. Uh, it's good to be with you here this Thursday in our Newport Beach studio. And uh, honestly, kind of a quiet day to be with you in markets today. The Dow ended up closing it up 62 points. It opened about the same, maybe 40 points, and just sort of melted a little higher throughout the day. And then we kind of closed off the highs into the close. Also a quiet day in, in bond land as well. We had a 10-year yield at 414. It was up a couple basis points. That's after a massive rally in, in bond prices the last couple of weeks. So we just sort of took a little breather there, and and that's okay here on Thursday. At 414, with what, where we've come, I mean, 5% on 10s down to 414, um, I do think we'll see a three-handle yield here sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. It's hard to say exactly when, but that seems to be the direction. Um, oil, you know, has also pulled back. We closed below 70 today, just high 69 in change on the price of oil, you know, per barrel. So a little, little lackluster there as well. Somewhat notable in markets, we've seen, you know, this year, I mean, obviously 2022 is a sort of really down year and in, in particularly in technology on the NASDAQ and a lot of the technology names. And then in 23, big recovery for those names. But the rest of the market was a little late to the party until November. And so in November, you really saw a broadening out of some of that rally into some of the other sectors in the market, and the average stock is now outperforming some of those uh, some of those tech names. And I actually think it's constructive. It's it's what you want to see, and it's a more normal kind of market environment as we head into 2024. You've definitely seen a, a rotation. Uh, financials have have been been up quite a bit lately, and and it reminds me of of past markets where you get a. a, a you know, a ramp up in interest rates kind of kills net interest margins for banks because the yield curve goes upside down. Short term rates are higher than long term rates. It's harder for those banks to make money. Then you get a pause into a declining, potentially declining rate cycle in the following year. And we've seen it in different periods before. 95, 96 is a, is a period I would note where it looks a little similar with at least the financial sector. We'll see how that that bodes in the next year. It is interesting with how high rates have gone, and we've talked about this before, but with just how resilient the consumer's been, because frankly, they're, not, they're just not feeling it as much. You know, the, the uh, consumer's still very strong. There's still cash savings. While we have seen credit card you know, debt go up, and it is expanding, and those interest rates are, are higher, credit card interest rates have always been high, even when rates were low. So I don't know that that's a whole, whole lot different there. But if you look at the average expenditure amount as a percentage of cash that consumers have on things like auto payments and mortgage payments and property taxes and HOA and all these sort of normal monthly expenditures. It's at about 16% of what a consumer has on cash today. And that's up a little bit, but it's interesting that it's really, it's still below where it was pre-pandemic, which was, you know, 2019. So higher rates really have not affected the consumer's ability to spend and, and, and even to feel it, frankly, at this point, on average, that, that is. Initial jobless claims came out today, um, right in line with expectations at 220,000. Ongoing claims, continuing claims, were actually a little bit better than expected. Week to week, I wouldn't read a ton into those numbers other than just to say it's sort of the status quo. We've got a slightly weakened labor market, but n not, not much at all. It still remains pretty robust into 2024. So, so far, you know, you've seen markets do pretty well, specifically in the fourth quarter of this year into next year. You have a big expectation the Fed is done with rates and then we'll start cutting rates. You still have an expectation for positive earnings growth next year at $246 a share in earnings on S&P. So I, I, I've said this before, but for all of those things to happen, I'd be a little surprised that there wasn't at least some more, you know, additional noise or, or, or some some give back and part part of that equation. But as of right now, we're not seeing it. Um, I had in there some news today. California had its budget estimate out with a small little hole of sixty eight billion dollars coming into uh, coming into the new year. So we went from a hundred billion dollar surplus last year to a sixty eight billion dollar deficit in, in uh, estimated for next year. And um, Maybe you could take the chart of the NASDAQ against some of that stuff, the preceding year of how those tech stocks do, a lot of capital gain revenue for California. There was a big move, or, or I guess relatively big move, in the yen today against the dollar. It was up about 2.5%. We closed below 144. Um, notable, there, you know, basically traders taking positions thinking that the uh, BOJ is going to end the negative interest rate policy there. Uh, I'm not so convinced of that, but moving currencies nonetheless is worth noting on the day. 
I did have a note in there on tax loss harvesting just because we're getting close to Christmas here and getting close to the year end and sort of how we think about it. And it, it definitely isn't uh, something like a direct index or something that's an algorithm just trying to sell things any moment that they happen to be down just to harvest losses. I really do think that sort of tax cart before the investment horse and counterproductive. But we do process um, some tax loss harvesting towards the end of the year uh, occasionally, and we'll do it real intentionally for specific clients, but then also broadly speaking. So I have a little note, note in there to answer someone's question that came in. Um, tomorrow really is the bigger news. We'll have non-farm payrolls coming out. We're expecting a uh, 190 print, uh, which would be up from the month prior at 150. And we're expecting unemployment rate to stay about the same, which was 3.9%. Um, so we've got that for you tomorrow, and then the um, CPI data will come out on Tuesday. So quiet day today, happy to report, frankly, and uh, uh, thank you for listening very much. David will have uh, Dividend Cafe for you in your inbox tomorrow, and please reach out with your questions. As always, it's been good to be with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.